All right, Whack-A-Mole Ross is now gone again. I don't know where he's at. He'll come back here in a minute. Now, buy down. If you had a really, 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 really good mortgage guy, and you ask him what the interest rate is today, he's going to tell you what do you want it to be. You want a three and a half percent? I can get you a 3% loan. It's going to cost you $10,000 to get it because we're going to buy down the interest. It's a prepaid interest and it's either permanent or it can be for the part time, like for the first four or five years. So I can get any interest rate you want. It's just going to cost you to get it. The market may be at four and all your buddies are like, I got a 4% rate. Oh, I got a 2%. Now you can brag at all the cocktail parties. The part you don't want to tell them is it costs you $18,000 up front to get 2%. You bought it down. All right. And there may be an advantage to it. You know, you may have a whole bunch of capital right now. And hey, I can lower my monthly payment by taking my football winnings, pay the five grand and buy a 3.25% interest and while everybody else is getting four. So over the years, I may save $100,000 and it's gonna cost me five or six today. So that's called a buy down. It's a permanent or partial prepayment of the interest. Neighbors called me twice now, I wonder what he wants. Our neighbor's also the mayor of Nashville. So I know he's at home doing nothing. All right, so flip on over to page 246, legislation. There is this thing called the Truth and Lending Act. So Dodd-Frank came about to try and help in 2010 prevent from prevent abusive lending practices. And we used to have this thing called, and the slang for it is called TILA. TILA stands for the Truth in Lending Act. Think of this when a borrower goes to a mortgage broker and they make an application for a loan, that lender or mortgage broker has to tell the consumer what the cost is of that loan. And they do this through several different forms. We used to have this thing called TILA, which is the Truth in Lending Act. That's this one. That deals with the terms of the loan. Think of TILA for terms. There's a second one called RESPA, the Real Estate Settlement Procedure Act, which we're going to cover next class. And then they've integrated these two loans into a new disclosure. So what you have now is this thing called TRID, the Truth in Lending, Real Estate Settlement Procedure Integrated Disclosure. This is a acronym of acronyms, all right? So what we're talking about here is TILA, the Truth in Lending. They have to be honest with you when you buy or when you apply for a loan, the mortgage broker has to be honest with you, and there are very, very strict rules on how this works. The big thing that they are really talking about is this thing called Regulation Z. Reg Z is what you hear it called. Looks like there are certain areas that are not being picked up on my screen. Reg Z. <laughs> Reg Z was enacted by the Federal Reserve Board to enforce the truth in lending. Now, the first thing we have to talk about is 
this is a rule or a law for creditors. So there has to be a definition of whom a creditor is. And a creditor is defined as someone who extends commercial credit more than 25 times a year, like any of those buy here, pay here, or um, what's the one that does the furniture? Uh, something now, I can't remember. Um, like a Rena Center or something? Yeah, Rena Center. If you yeah, thank you. Um, if they extend commercial credit more than 25 times a year, they, they are determined to be what's called a creditor. Or if they extend credit more than five times a year, where the asset collateral is a first lien mortgage, then you're also a creditor. So more than 25 times a year for commercial credit or more than five times if you are securing that loan with a first lien mortgage. That's what sucks in the mortgage brokers and the lenders into this because if it, what, what is the asset we're collateralizing the loan with? A house, all right? So that makes lenders now a creditor which means they have to abide by these rules. One of the other rules is this thing called the three-day right of rescission. Three-day right of rescission. Resi yeah, whatever. Rescission. Three-day right of rescission. What the hell was that? I have no idea. <laughs> have you ever heard of buyer's remorse? You buy something and you're sorry you didn't, you want to take it back? That's where this comes from, all right? Now, the three-day right of rescission does not apply to the purchase of residential property. So when the house gets sold and the deed transfers, remember, there is no three-day right of rescission. But it does apply to a refinance. If anybody's ever refinanced your house and tried to get money out, you actually have to sign and close and then wait three days before you can get your money because of this three-day right of rescission requirement that allows the consumer to change their mind and undo the deal. Now, the big thing that Tila likes to stress is this advertising the advertising of credit and all con creditors by definition that we just talked about if you are deemed a creditor by regulation z you must follow these advertising rules and here they are i want to sell one of you guys one of my rentals and i'm going to do it for no money down is that a good deal for you? Oh, but wait, I forgot to tell you, I'm going to jack the price 20% because it's no money down. Oh, now story's changed, hasn't it? How about I'm going to, how about I'll sell you one of my rentals and the payments are only $100? Cool deal, right? Well, I forgot to tell you, payments are hourly. All right. See how you can mislead somebody in the advertisement by not telling them everything? So Regulation Z says, if I mention any of the trigger terms, I have to mention them all. Down payment, monthly payment, interest rate, number of payments. I have, if I tell you zero down, but the price is now 20%, that gives you a clear picture of what the credit I'm extending to you. And I guarantee you've heard this. And you've probably laughed at it. Now you're going to understand. Anybody ever watch a car commercial? 0% financing. Not all apply to monthly paid $300,000 earns credit all that remember that all that fast talk at the end 
That is them complying with Regulation Z. Because if they tell you zero down, that's a trigger term. I now have to tell you $30,000 financed over 360 months, paid at 25%, 20 at 3.5% APR. Because if I mention one of them, I have to mention all of them. Now I can say things like easy payments. That's cool. But I can't say $100 payments without saying all the other stuff. I could say low down, buy our house with a low down payment. That is not telling you enough. But if I said buy our house with zero down, now I got to tell you how much you financed, your monthly payments, when they're due, how often they're due, your APR, all of that. So that's the big thing with uh, Regulation Z is to make sure that they do tell you all of it or they're vague enough to make you want to inquire. Hey, it's low down payments, call me. So you would call and go, hey, how much down payment? Now it's not advertising, now it's a sales pitch, all right? Or at the top of the next page, if you caught violating Tila, it can be very expensive, all right? It can be up to 1% of the net worth of the lender. So you see a company like Chrysler have a car commercial, if they violate it, Are we back? Are we back? Sorry, I apologize. So the Equal Credit Opportunity Act means that there are now eight protected classes. You are not allowed to discriminate credit based upon one of these eight protected classes. This is not the fair housing. That is a whole separate rule. So the eight protected classes are race, color, religion, national origin, sex, marital status, age, and dependence on public assistance. You cannot use any one of those eight in your determination of whether you extend a person credit or not. Fair housing only has seven, and we'll deal with those in our fair housing chapter. But a credit lender or a person who extends credit, the creditor, cannot use any of these eight protected classes to discriminate on lending, okay? Now, there are some other lending benefits to banks. There's this thing called the Community Reinvestment Act or the CRA, and this is designed for smaller banks that cannot play with the big boys, all right? So in essence, they get a little different treatment. 
not necessarily preferential, just different because they're a little smaller. Salem Bank, the one I just mentioned, and Huntington Bank are both CRA banks. What a CRA bank is, is they must, under their rules, loan out money to the people in their community. They cannot loan it out outside. So what you see is a lot of smaller, and I'm gonna say urban banks, that want to keep the money in that community because they certainly don't wanna take somebody's paycheck and then loan it out to somebody out in the suburbs and that money, quote unquote, leave the neighborhood. So if you've got a client that can't quite qualify for a loan, you may want to seek out one of these CRA banks because they are required to loan to their neighborhood. All right, they've got like a one, three, five mile radius. So your, your borrower could go, hey, look, I live in the neighborhood. I'll use you as my bank, but I need a loan to buy the house two doors down from you. That's what a CRA bank is good for. A lot of other things, but that's mainly for us. They are required to loan out their money in those areas to get this preferential treatment. Over on page 249 is that RESPA. We're gonna do a whole chapter, deals with the settlement procedure, the settling up. Matter of fact, it is tomorrow, all right? So we're not gonna talk about it now. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about in this chapter is this thing called automated underwriting, AUS. It's called an automated underwriting service or system. It deals with trying to remove all of this potentially biased stuff. So if you've got a client that maybe has a 750 credit score and 100,000 in the bank, you could probably get them approved through AUS like that because it looks at credit score, income, money in the bank, makes a decision. A lot of times you will hear this called desktop underwriting because the computer's doing it. It just spits out the information. Hey, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, they're credit good. Give them a loan. Contrast that with this thing called hand underwriting. Hand underwriting is when a human actually looks at the application because the application may have some issues with it. One of my good friends named Robert Sloan was in a work-related accident, broke his back, ran up a very high medical bill. His employer did not have workers come, even though he said he did. So guess who the bills got stuck to? My buddy, right? And we're not gonna go into that whole other lawsuit, but he is a prime example. When you look at his debt to income ratio, remember that, the debt to the income, his DTI is over 200% because of all of these expensive medical bills. But if you could remove all of the medical bills from his debts, he's got a very low debt to income. So he's got this one situation that in his particular case was not technically caused by him that has put him in a hard spot. He is a prime candidate to be hand underwritten so that some lender somewhere will hear his story and go, yeah, you know what? If you took the medical bills out, he's probably a good guy. We may take a chance and loan him money. So it's a thought process where a desktop, credit score, bank account, boom. Hand underwritten has a human look at it and go, 
yeah, I kind of look at that. I, I, I get it. Yeah, let's do this loan. All of your GSE loans are hand underwritten, by the way. The FHA, the VA, SBA, FSA, all of those are hand underwritten. Now, the problem with hand underwriting is it may take 45 days to get to, whereas automated like that. So typically as an agent, when we say, hey, we want to close on the house in 30 days, that's cool unless you know your borrower may be getting an FHA loan. You may have to say, hey, we got to close in 45 days because the lender is going to be a little slower than normal. And right now, in this situation that we're in, Quicken is telling us, ask for 45 days to close because we're really busy and we're only at half staff and there are people at home. So it's taking them a little longer to get to do stuff. So desktop or automated versus hand underwritten is typically what we're talking about here. All right. That is chapter 13, dealing with the government's intervention. I am sorry we had a couple technical issues, but we got it back and we're all working. Are there any questions over chapter 13? Are we all good? Thumbs up. All right, tomorrow we will do the next chapter. There is a homework problem. Normally I would pass it out, but I believe in the online section, there is a PDF. You guys might want to print that out for tomorrow so that we can go through it while we're in class. All right. You don't necessarily need to even print it if you just want to get it on screen. You know, I mean, you might put it on your phone. So when we go through it, we'll get it. Other than that, are there any more questions? So I heard you guys talking about a study guide. Where is that? Say what again? You guys were talking about a study guide on Friday. And I cannot find a study guide. Is it the doodle? things on the online uh, thing the doodle thing there is a separate entry in your system when you go to launch your course you should have the study guide please tell me nino got that to you guys i All don't right. know where it's i can't find ross, the study guide ross i'll call you and we'll get it worked out neither all right i will call you guys individually this afternoon and we'll get it worked out for you. Any questions? All right, I'm going to then stop.